Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Misty Morning and Focus Combination. So good guys, so good guys. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee or possibly something harder as I always say. Depends on what part of the planet you're on. So today we're gonna be talking about Canon and how they were just rated top dog when it comes to low light performance with the Canon EOS R3. I'm stunned. I am stunned. So we're going to get into that in just a second. But before we do, I want to say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, they're free. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. So guys, Canon EOS R3, even though it isn't their flagship and there will be a Canon EOS R1 coming out and I'm still waiting for it. We want to be able to upgrade those 1Ds to it. Um, hopefully, we see it in 2022. But according to DxO Mark, they now are the king of the hill when it comes to full-frame cameras, low-light performance. And when I was seeing that, I was like, I don't, I don't get that. You know, we know that Sony has been doing an amazing job. You have the Sony A9 Mark II that is just unbelievable when it comes to low light, as most of us know. Also, there is now the Z9 from Nikon. And I figured now that that is a 45 megapixel sensor in comparison to the 24 megapixel sensor of the Sony A9 Mark II, it would do better. But it looks like the 45 megapixels of the Canon ends up winning, which is odd. I guess not really odd, but kind of because we know that the sensor that's in the Nikon Z9 is a Sony sensor and Sony does an amazing job when it comes to low light performance. They always have. So seeing that the Canon EOS R3 took the king of the hill, so to speak, low light performance, I thought that was interesting. So if you don't know what DxO Mark is, basically they've been doing reviews on cameras, lenses, sensors, and doing testing of them, deep dive testing, so to speak. And they come out always with performance reports or rankings on everything. And some people say, ah, it's a little bit biased. Other people say, no, it's actually correct. It's not here nor there. The bottom line is, according to, as of right now, the Canon EOS R3 is top dog when it comes to low light. Now, what they said is simply this. I will quote them. Not only does it have excellent dynamic range at low light, mid and high sensitivity, it has the best low light performance of any, once again, any full frame camera in our database. This makes the Canon EOS R3 a very attractive option for the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III users transitioning over to Canon's mirrorless RF system. And it's a solid option for any photographers new to the Canon brand. Now, once again, this is top dog, top notch. It gets the best rankings and that is even over the Sony a9 Mark II, as well as the brand new Nikon Z9. I thought that the Z9 would actually edge it out a little bit because we know, once again, the Canon EOS R1 will be coming out, which will be their quote unquote main flagship. Now, the price difference is like $6,000 for the Canon EOS R3, whereas the Nikon Z9 comes at about $5,500. So you're looking at about $500 difference between the Nikon Z9 and the Canon EOS R3. Not a big difference. Now, how the DxO Mark sensor ranking of 96 was achieved, the Canon EOS R3's portrait color or color depth came in at 25 bits, whereas the landscape or dynamic range came in at 14.7 EVs and sports or low light ISO came in at 4,086 ISO. So what does that mean? These terms, bits and color depth and dynamic range and low light ISO. Let's break it down just a little bit. When DxO Mark refers to portrait or color depth, what color depth is, is a color sensitivity rating, let's say a bit rate. What they're saying is right around 22 bits is what they call excellent when it comes to the actual color and color renditioning. This is actually getting 25 bit, 
which is awesome. It is definitely top notch. Now, when it comes to landscape or their dynamic range, now EVs have to do with exposure value or how many stops of light can this sensor bring in without creating a ton of noise. Now, 14.7 EV is really good. You're basically in darkness and it's still able to bring in enough light to create a good enough or a noiseless or less noisy image. Now, when it comes to noise, it also has to do with low light ISO. When they call it sports or low light ISO and give it a ranking of 4,086 ISO, what that means is the way DXO Mark does it is anything around 30 dB they say is okay. Anything worse than that, it is not. So this camera will be able to shoot at 4,086 ISO with less than 30 dB worth of noise or your signal to noise ratio, right? So you're gonna be able to get, let's call it noise free at 4,086 ISO. As soon as you go above that, you're gonna start getting worse and worse and worse or more and more and more noise. So that all being said, I took a look at the Nikon Z9 as well as the Sony a9 Mark II, just to see the comparison or contrast between the two. We know the Sony has a 24 megapixel sensor, whereas the Z9 has a 45.7 megapixel sensor. Obviously, the Z9 can do 8K recording at 30p, whereas the Sony can only do 4K. But where I find it interesting here is we know Sony does an amazing job when it comes to low light. The Z9 can handle 60 ISO up to 25,600 ISO, whereas the Sony A9 Mark II can do 100 ISO all the way up to 51,200 ISO. So it is actually doing better than the Z9 when it comes to low light. Why is that? Well, one of the reasons is, is because even though it's the exact same size sensor, what happens is, is you have a larger pixel when it comes to your 24 megapixel A9 Mark II. So instead of having a pixel pitch of 4.35 on the Z9, the Sony has 5.94, obviously larger pixels. Larger pixels are always better than smaller pixels, generally, when everything else is the same. Why? You end up with less noise. Now, when it comes to the Canon EOS R3, this is what I thought was interesting. You have a similar pitch between the Z9 and the Canon EOS R3, but the R3 is still edging it out when it comes to low light performance. How is Canon doing it? I don't know. Once again, Canon makes their own sensors, whereas Nikon is actually buying in their sensors from Sony and then having to do their sweetening, let's say, to them in, call it post-production or in firmware. And that's the way Nikon works it. Whereas, like I said, Canon is making their own. So how they're squeezing that little bit out of it, we don't know. But the bottom line is, once again, Canon takes the top notch or is the top dog when it comes to low light. As of right now with the Canon EOS R3, what is going to happen when the Canon EOS R1 comes out? I really don't know. Will it be worse? Will it be better? Who knows? We will have to wait and see. I want to know your thoughts about it. What do you think? Were you surprised by those numbers? I mean, they literally came out only about four days ago. And when I saw it, I'm like, I have to do a video about this because I want to get your thoughts on it. What do you think? Is this something that makes a difference to you? Are you a low light shooter? Like for me, I do a lot of events where I'm in the most crappiest light that you can even dream of. So having a camera that will actually get an image at a higher ISO and not having to use flash is a big, big advantage for me. Now, one other thing I wanna tell you, you see this over here? Some of you guys, when I did that microphone review just in the last video, I believe, or a couple of videos ago, why don't we see the Electro Voice RE20? So I pulled it out. Normally we're using the RE20 as well as right here, I have the Rode shotgun mic. I also right down here have that little mic that I told you about the other day. So we're doing some advanced testing of these three also. I'm gonna do some comparison contrast between these. Maybe I'll put it into another video, maybe I won't. But even just for myself, I wanna know what the difference is in sound between these three mics. 
Anyways, not to run on and on, which I can do. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, throw it a thumbs up. That would be helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That would be awesome. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for you another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and be prepared.